This is how I turned my scratched up Xbox 360 Slim into a brand new portable console using only 3D printing. Big thanks to JLC PCB for providing these 3D parts, and without further ado, let me show you how you can do it yourself. Okay, so here is my Xbox 360. As you can see, it's not in very good condition, the shell's just all scratched up, and I want something new. The guys over at JLC PCB provided me with the 3D printed case, so big thanks to them, and it was printed in a nylon plastic. As you can see, it's got this nice matte finish. And inside we have a bag, and this is the little mount for the 2.5 inch hard drive. This case does not allow for a DVD drive, but my system is RGH'd anyway, so this isn't too much of a concern for me. We're going to need a few different things for this project, including cables, buttons, some heat inserts, and some screws. And of course we're going to need a screwdriver kit, and my personal favourite is this one from iFixit. In order to install the new case, we first need to disassemble the console and remove the old case. Now, there's probably better ways to do this, so definitely don't take this as a disassembly guide, but since my case is in really low condition and I'm not going to be using it again, I'm not really too concerned about breaking it or doing anything wrong. So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm removing all of these screws. We want every screw removed, we want the console completely disassembled down to the motherboard. Once all the screws are out, we can pop off the faceplate, making sure to be careful with that ribbon cable. Although we're not going to be using it, it's still possible to damage something in the ring of light board that we do actually still need. Removing the two screws on the front of the console. And then pulling off the back cover. Next we can remove everything inside, so removing the DVD drive, removing the hard drive caddy and the plastic fan shroud. We're not going to need any of these pieces in the new case. We'll remove the ring of light board and then pull up on the fan to release the motherboard. This is the RGH install I went for. This is an SRGH. Now I could convert this to an RGH3 but at the minute it works and it's not too much of a concern for me how quick this console boots. As the console is going to be constantly looking for a DVD drive, the front ring of light middle LED is going to keep flashing. So what we can do here is solder and bridge these two pins together to make the console think that a DVD drive is still plugged in even though it's not. This is just going to make those LEDs stop flashing and overall just, it's just a lot nicer to look at. I'm going to leave all the diagrams in the description below on how you do this. Now let's take a little minute to talk about our sponsor JLC PCB who kindly provided the 3D printed parts needed for this project. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the cheapest and best way to get your PCBs printed professionally. They offer lots of customization on PCBs including the colour of the silkscreen, thickness of the boards and lots of other things that you need to make your PCB perfect. They offer a top notch quality service at low affordable prices. They also offer 3D printing and CNC machining making them the perfect solution for all of your project's needs. Go to the link in the description below to get your PCBs professionally printed today. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Next we head over to the buttons and make sure that they fit in the case, as we do actually need to solder some wires to this. This is not a completely solderless project, you do need a bit of soldering. As you can see this big button here we can actually just unscrew and then push wires in and then screw it back up to make a connection, but with the smaller button we are going to need to do some soldering. I went for these cables that just join together as I don't want to keep desoldering stuff if I want to take the motherboard out of the shell in the future. These buttons only take two wires so it's really simple soldering, simply a black and red wire on the two prongs on the button. Now to make these buttons actually work, we need to solder to some pins on the ring of light board. Once again, the diagrams are in the description. You can make these buttons do whatever you want, but I made mine the power and sync buttons. We don't need an eject button, as we do not have a DVD drive. 
So I went ahead and went for those two buttons. The soldering on this is quite simple. They're quite big pins. And to be fair, if you've soldered anything before, I think you should be able to do this. They're a similar size to what a pin header would be. So if you've done things like that, then I'm sure you'll be fine doing this. It's way easier than something like an RGH install. Okay, so once those are all soldered, we now need to prepare the case. Now these little heat inserts, what we do is we put them on the end of our soldering iron, and then we push them into the case. And then what this does is it melts the plastic around this little metal piece, and it gives us a nice metal little place for the screws to go into. I found that the holes on this shell were actually a little bit too big. This might be able to be fixed by using bigger heat inserts, I used the ones recommended by the designer of this model, but I still think the hole should be a little bit smaller. It did cause some issues later when screwing everything back together, as one of mine came out when I was screwing the top plate back on. This is definitely something that could be fixed in the 3D model though. Next we'll push the buttons into the case and screw them in. You probably want to make the bigger button the power button and the smaller one the sync button, but again this is completely up to you how you do this and what you make the buttons do. Then we can reinsert the ring of light board into the motherboard and plug in the cables. At this point we can just test to make sure the buttons work by plugging in the power, and mine did, so I'm good to continue to the next step. Okay, so the next step is actually getting the hard drive mounted. Now, it comes with a nice included mount so it doesn't rattle around inside. And what you do is you simply just screw into the back of the four screws on your 2.5 inch hard drive and it secures it nicely. This then sits on the motherboard and lines up nicely with the screws that go through the case. So it's going to hold it in there, make sure it's nice and tight and secure and that it's not going to rattle around. Once that's lined up, we can connect the buttons up and then simply just put the top cover on. Make sure not to get any wires trapped here and also make sure that the SATA cable is plugged into your hard drive. And once that's all done, we can go ahead and screw the case back together and that is our full Xbox 360 3D printed case installation. And here we have it, the fully finished Xbox 360 Slim 3D printed case. I'd like to say a big thank you to JLC PCB for providing the parts for this project. Their links will be in the description below. I will be taking a look at this design to see how I can change it and improve it, but for now, if you do want to try this out, the links are in the description below. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.